Hey there, Leo. Welcome back to my channel. If you enjoy my readings, please be sure to like and subscribe, as well as leave me a comment and let me know if this reading resonates with you. Alright, so today we're going to do a supernatural slash astrological tarot reading. And first things first, um, let me get these cards shuffled up. But while we're shuffling, I wanted to tell you that Mercury is retrograde. So how does Mercury, the planet Mercury, affect your communications? So Mercury has a very high frequency. And when it comes too close to the Earth, or if it goes into retrograde, it definitely causes a lot of um, issues with our technological gadgets. So you might find yourself um, not being able to contact people or sending messages that didn't go through, you know, um, not being able to get your printer to work at work, or just having general communication problems all the way around. Alright, so your first card that we're getting is the Six of Pentacles reversed. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and pull this love cards. Love for my Leos. Sun, moon, moon, rising, Venus. Sun, moon, rising, Venus for my Leos. Love reading. What's been plaguing my Leos? Sun, moon, rising, Venus. Alright, so under what's... Cr um, What's in your recent past? We've got Castiel, and he is carrying the bone, um, carrying the burdens of too many. All right, so I see you have this card a lot. So you're carrying around the burdens of too many. And then we've got the Lovers card, and this is in your um, immediate future. And the Lovers card basically is the re the the relationship card and usually it is um it's a very good card it's a positive card so if you've been having trouble in your relationship or if you're single this is a good sign that you're gonna have an opportunity to hook up in the future or maybe even rekindle an um your love life now, I want to go ahead and warn you, with Mercury Retrograde, all kinds of exes come jumping out of the woodwork. That doesn't mean that you have to jump on that. Alright? You, you do not have to, um, you don't have to go down the road you've already been down to know that it's a bumpy one. Alright, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Leo. Alright. So right next to the Six of Pentacles reversed, uh, which is in your immediate future. Oh no, your, I'm sorry, that's your past. We've got Sagittarius. The card for Sagittarius. <clears throat> which is a creative card and it has a lot to do with um, change, overcoming um, you know st new stability and let's take another card here for right underneath uh, Castiel we've got you carrying the burdens of too many let me show you poor Cass he looks so sad right, he's got all these burdens that he's carrying around and you know he looks like um an ancient Greek god who's just carrying around all these burdens that's just too much for him. Alright, so let's go ahead and pull the uh, lover's card, the, lo the card for the lover's series. Alright, series is a really good card. I really like this card. It has to do with positive... Um, the mother figure. I think that one's the mother figure. So I just got these cards and I'm just starting to get the hang of them. I'll have to pull it up and tell you exactly what it says. But for the card that goes underneath your lovers, 
We're going to pull Sun, Moon, Rise, and Venus for my Leos. And the bottom falls out. All right, so <clears throat> Venus. So under the lover's card, we got Venus, the planet of love. So I don't know what that means, but we're about to find out. So definitely in the future, you've got love. If you've been struggling with love, if you've been single, keep your eyes peeled. Um, definitely exes are going to come around. It's Mercury retrograde. Communications are low. Uh, people are cutting out people out of their lives, trash, that they don't want to have anything to do with that negative vibes anymore, and they are not going to take, uh, the bull crap anymore. So, so these people that are getting dumped left and right, they might come knocking on your door and try to get back into your life if you're single. Don't let this happen, okay? Um, let's go ahead and read your cards and see what we've got. So the Six of Pentacles reversed is all about um, money. It's going to have something to do with an earth sign. Leo, um, no, not Leo. Uh, earth signs are Virgo, Taurus, and Capricorn. So the Six of Pentacles... is reversed comes forward reversed in tarot readings when the flow of wealth in your life is out of balance do you have a lot of outstanding overdue debt are you continuing to feed into the investment that isn't showing you the returns that you deserve take a careful look at your cash flow and make adjustments accordingly all right so <clears throat> this definitely has to do with your love life um, if you're single this could mean that you're maybe you're not used to dealing with the finances by yourself if you're in a relationship it could be that your partner has been dealing with this but it's time to double check the the um, double check the credit Pull up the credit, pull up the bank statement, double check, triple check, and get everything going right in the right direction so that you can solidify your future, all right? Sagittarius, we've got can't find it y'all hold on might just have to go by memory for this one y'all I can't find it for real maybe it's back here oh here we go all right Sagittarius so for whatever reason your financial situation seems to be attached to the Sagittarius sign so it says it's important that we have interests and hobbies in order to be a well-rounded person when when we're feeling intellectually and physically unfulfilled we can become clingy irritable and burdened by those around us make a list of all the things that you always wanted to learn and participate in and narrow it down to your top three then do them on the flip side you could be spreading yourself too thin with multiple commitments and Sagittarius, while an adaptable energy, can also keep it up for can only keep it up for so long. All right, y'all. I think my toe is going to sleep. I felt like something bit me, but 
I think my foot's just going to sleep. I hope. All right. Keywords. Optimism. Exploration. Knowledge. Commitment. Religion. Search. Clingy. Irritable. All right. So we overcome that, and that's going to really level out some of your issues right there. All right. And then we've got the, the burdens of too many. So... Let's take a look at the Ten of Bones. Seems like you get this one awful lot. You know, this one reminds me of when I was going to college. I always had too much on my plate. Um, I never could um, seem to, like, carry on normally. I had to... Um, my husband helped me a lot with dishes and laundry, and I honestly don't know how I would have got through it without him, to be honest. <coughs> the Ten of Bones. So, in the traditional tarot deck, this has a man who's carrying ten wands. And, and his back just looks like he's breaking as he's trying to carry all this baggage that's so much heavy, heavy weight on him. So it says, when reversed, the weight of responsibility represented by the upright ten of bones has been lifted. You can finally breathe a little easier with less stress in your life. Often, when this tarot card comes forward in a reading, it's a sign that relief is soon to come. If you're feeling exhausted, know that the end of your troubles is near. Okay, so that's good. It's coming to an end. Your hard work is finally going to pay off. Let's check out Ceres. C-E-R-E-S. Ceres. This is a really good card. I read this one earlier, but um, I just don't know it well enough to regurgitate it to you right now because I'm so tired. <coughs> All right, so things are abundant in your life right now, and the potential for reaching your goals is at a peak. You must, um, you just need to stay focused on the things that matter most to you. Don't let minor distractions get in the way of that or influence your decisions. You know what is best for you, even if it doesn't make sense. To anyone else. If you are going through a low emotional period, do your best to appreciate the beauty in the everyday. Eat nourishing foods, make beautiful art, go on a walk, reconnect with nature, spend time with your loved ones, doing things that you that matter to you. Material items are overindulgence. I'm sorry, material items and overindulgence will not serve you right now. So avoid emotional binges. All right, so um, emotional binging. Yeah, I read this card three or four times today in this, in this reading. So um, I find that a lot of people with mental disorders, such as bipolar disorder, will go on a depression and then they will go on a, like, they go down and then they go up, right? And when you go down for several days and then you come up for several days, on the up cycle, many people who have money to spend and a lot of people who don't have money to spend will go on a spending spree anyway, all right? And this um, emotional... Um, you know, weight is lifted when they blow all their money somehow. And I've seen this with people who have gambling addictions. I've seen it with people who have drug addictions and they blow all their money on drugs. I've seen it um, for alcoholics who just go out every night and blow all of their money um, at the bar. I don't know, y'all. I'm epileptic. I can't go to the bar every night. Um, it just doesn't even seem like something I would want to do. I, I've desperately tried to go out and party it up with my gal pals and I'm just not a bar person. I do love music and I love concerts, but the idea of getting 
blackout drunk and not knowing if I made it home safe or if I even walked to the hotel safe just doesn't seem like fun to me. <laughs> so watch out for these emotional binges. If you're not dealing with your emotions, it can cause you to, to have this problem, okay? Um, when we are children, our parents are supposed to take care of us. They feed us when we are hungry, and at some point, we take over the parents' role for ourselves. And if you're struggling getting things done, it could be that wound from when you're, from your upbringing, which is causing you to get in your own way. All right. So uh, the key words are nurturing, abundance, unconditional love, rage, grief, loss, and beauty. All right. So there is a whole nother side over here for the astrology. And um, I honestly, I just don't have time to read all that. But if you do want a personal reading, um, I am going to start taking personal readings. So be sure to leave me a message and um, I can let you know, you know, we can get you a reading. And of course, we got a family discount too. And last but not least, we've got the Lover's card and Venus. I'm really just dying to see how this fucking, um, whoops, I just said a cuss word. I'm going to have to learn how to blank that out. All right. How this works out. Okay. So we've got the lovers and Venus. What are the chances? So the lovers card is just what it sounds like. Happiness, joy, abundance, everything that you could want. <coughs> All right. When Sam's girlfriend, Jessica, is killed, Sam is faced with what is arguably the biggest decision of his life. He must decide whether to avenge her death by becoming a hunter or to choose a normal human life. The Lover's Tarot card symbolizes a major life decision or a crossroads. All right, as you all know, um, many people who have, have done everything they can to succeed in life will then go on to sell their soul at the crossroads, hoping that some demon is going to come and give them everything they ever wanted. Rarely, rarely does anything like that ever actually happen, okay? Only way that you're going to get to the top is if you work hard for it. So upright, the lover's card says, <clears throat> I'm sorry, y'all. My foot's falling asleep. I just had to make sure there wasn't like a spider getting my toe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the lover's tarot card depicting a harmonious union, friendship, or partnership. However, within this partnership, there is an important choice to be made. When you find yourself faced with life-changing decisions, the Lover's Tarot card advises that you listen to your heart. All right. <clears throat> so we got the Lover's card as your final outcome. It says listen to your heart. And then we've got the Venus card. And it says... Okay, so the, the rulers of this are Taurus and Libra. And in this reading, it is time to appreciate the beauty in your surroundings. Too often, we rush through life, never stopping to appreciate the simple things, food, shelter, our human needs, but we also need to enjoyment. We need pleasure and intimacy. We need laughter and we need rest. Without those, we are just empty shells prone to depression and loneliness. Venus serves as a reminder to pamper yourself every now and again. You'll be more productive in the long run. You could be going through a period of attraction right now. Whether you are attracting material items or romantic interests, Venus wants you to not only enjoy it, but to utilize it. How can you use this magical energy you are radiating to serve yourself. So often we are told not to be selfish or 
to put our needs first, but in fact, you must. When you are happy, the people around you are happier as well. All right. So if there's something dragging you down, put it on the forefront. Uh, cope with it. Deal with it. If, if it's um, a heavy weight, um, an emotional loss, um, maybe your lover's out of town. Maybe you've lost um, a, a loved one. Maybe you have family that's struggling and you're unable to help them. Sometimes you can't help your family if it's enabling them. This is the kind of struggles that cause you trouble whenever, you know, you're trying to live your best life. All right. So let's pull some manifestation cards and wrap this reading on up. All right. So you might have been having some financial difficulties. You know, just double check your tag. Double check your, um, whatever those bills are that don't go through automatically. If you have any that aren't on auto pay, double check them. Make sure they're going through. Pull up your bank account. Make sure that everything looks just so. Make sure there's not some, um, you know, app that you've allowed to be on your phone that's charging you monthly that you haven't recognized. Maybe that account that you thought you canceled is still charging you. I'm not going to name any, but... Ah, oh, I want to. All right, so under Sagittarius and the Six of Pentacles with your financial situations, it says cut a string on a moon cycle for manifestations, patterns for change. So you have to start new patterns, push the old patterns out. Um, past life lover. All right, so you've got the lover's cards. You've got this um, Castiel, just so sad. Then you've got this series over here talking about emotional um, baggage or uh, what did it say? Emotional binges. Okay. This is a new one for me. I'm loving this. All right. So it says you might have a past life lover. All right. So not only might you have a past life lover, but you might have a current life lover who is not going to want this to happen. Okay. So, if your soulmate comes a calling, make sure that they are legit and not um, loco, because <laughs> it is Mercury retrograde, and you never know what might come rolling in your driveway. All right, the lover's card, Venus, and what are we gonna do to manifest this love, Leo? Twin flame. Alright, so twin flames are part of the reason that I started doing this uh, tarot reading. I feel like um, I'm watching some of these tarot readers online uh, and they kind of encourage you to stay in bad relationships. Using the moon and the mercury retrograde and all these as excuses to stay in a bad relationship. Um, if you're in a relationship with someone who um, is your exact opposite and it's not working out for you, then don't continue on that. If it's not working out for you and you're not happy, and especially if you're still young and things are looking up, then get out of that relationship while you can. But, but like the twin flame just kind of, the, the way that they explain it, this kind of makes me feel like you're staying in a relationship because of the wrong reasons. For the wrong reasons. If your heart's not in it to win it, then... But look, you've got the Lover's card and the Venus card. And then the Twin Flame. So the Twin Flame is like someone who's your opposite. And, and opposites do attract. But in astrology... Your opposite is your detriment. Okay, so Leo. The opposite of Leo in um, astrology is Aquarius. So this could be your perfect twin flame. But like, like for me, um, for example, 
certain things work out for me and my husband. He likes to cook and I like to garden. So therefore, sometimes I get a break, I get to work in the garden and he gets to cook me dinner and I don't have to cook. And he doesn't have to get out in the yard. Well, the way he was raised, his he was raised on a farm and he doesn't like doing that type of work. So I do. Well, my mom kicked me out of the kitchen, didn't let me cook. And so therefore I hate cooking. Uh, well, that's not true. That's not true. I love cooking, but sometimes it's nice to have a role reversal. So if you're in a situation where your lover is indeed someone who compliments you, even though you're opposites, then that's the good kind of love. That's what you want to strive for. But if it's the kind of love where you're doubling down on the burdens and you don't really have anything in common, then that, that's not the kind of um, twin flame that you really want to keep lighting up for, right? Okay, so, but it looks to me like this love, I, I just don't like this twin flame card. You know, I know a lot of people think it's good, but it, it can be um, set you up for failure, especially if... You know, you watch a lot of these twin flame videos and you think that you've just found your long time lover, but it could be the opposite. It could be someone that you just literally cannot be your detriment. Okay. So how do you know if, I mean, you really need to see a therapist to find out this kind of stuff. Um, but it looks like you might have somebody else looking your direction. Alrighty, Leo. Well, I hope this reading resonates with you. I hope you love it. Um, I hope that, that um, you know, it, this advice helped you. If it did, please be sure to give me a like and a subscribe. And um, if you are in a narcissistic relationship, I will, um, I can do a narcissist reading. Um, but really, this didn't really bring up any narcissistic traits at all except for maybe this financial problem over here but that could just be due to you know just being too tired to take care of the bills or whatever but you can always hire someone to help you out with that if you have the financial ability to do so sometimes <laughs> someone to maybe you hire someone to do the lawn for you or someone to do something that give you a little extra free time to make sure all your your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed and everything's just so. Alright, so thank you Leo for all the likes, shares, comments, and subscribes. If you do indeed want to continue hearing my readings, I'm going to need some feedback. So let me know and, um, and I'll probably see you next week.